really confusing for me because I have a great granddaughter that's just about to come into the world. Uh, so it's really like, ooh, reality. When confusion claims us, when we feel unable to do anything right, the Holy invites us to be faithful. We find joy. We're all lit. Where in the world do we find joy today? Joy giver, we come before you to celebrate the gift of your presence. In the hurry of the season, we need a sense of your spirit walking alongside us. Guiding us. Call us back to our roots, that we may go forth with joy to do the work you place before us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray in the words of Christ taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Going to sing, uh, seated with our mass song, uh, Joy to the World. The words are on the screen. Christmas Eve candle, that uh, slot is still open as well. So. 
I'm just looking around. I'm seeing nothing, but, but let's turn to our story time, shall we? <laughs> so, uh, with any sort of luck, we'll get through the story. Now, you've been following the adventures of the uh, Sunday school kids who got stuck on top of a mountain following a rock slide. This is Grandma's story, by the way. That's Melody's story. It was November and cold, and Terry and Susan, Lois and Daniel, are traveling with Mr. Blake and have already spent one night camping out. It was during their first night that they saw a star break through the clouds. There we are. And this gave them hope that they would find their way home. The next day, disaster struck, when Lois accidentally got most of the matches wet. A fight between Lois and her brother got going and didn't end until a dove was startled by their yelling. The dove in the Bible is a symbol of peace. So uh, this morning, the story continues as the groups make their way further down the mountain. Mr. Blake carefully placed the two dry matches in his shirt pocket, and the kids picked up their stuff to move on. Daniel quietly moved up to Lois and nudged her with his shoulder. Sorry, Luke. I know you didn't mean to do it. It's okay, Daniel. They've been walking for about an hour when they came to a particularly steep part. They had to let themselves down that mountainside, clinging from tree to tree to keep from sliding. Terry was in the lead when suddenly he lost his grip and started sliding, then rolling and finally falling headlong with his body bouncing from tree to rock to bush before he finally stopped and lay still. Lord save him prayed Mr. Blake, as he rushed to Terry's side, moving much faster than any of the children had ever seen him move before. As the others came up as quickly as they could, Mr. Blake was checking over Terry's arms and legs for breaks. Thank the Lord, there doesn't seem to be any broken bones. At that point, Terry began to return to consciousness and sat up, rubbing at the back of his head and saying, Oh, follow my finger, lad, Mr. Blake said, watching Terry's eyes carefully. He breathed a sigh of relief when he saw that Terry seemed to be able to focus. They all sat down and then had some water and some crackers, giving Terry a chance to recover. Then they all stood up and got ready to move on. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand up. Save, Lord, let the king hear us when we call. Thus says the word, said Mr. Blake. Could have been a much worse accident. Thank God this lad was spared. Well, Terry was still a bit wobbly and very sore. So they shared up the things he'd been carrying amongst themselves and started out again. Not long after that, the clouds moved in and it started to rain, not heavily, but enough to soak their mittens and their hats and make everyone feel dismal. Soon everyone was damp and cold and dispirited. Can't we stop now, asked Susan. I am tired and wet. We need to make it to the foot of the mountain before nightfall. It will be warmer there. Anyway, the wood here will all be wet. We couldn't get a fire going to warm us up, said Mr. Blake. Well, Daniel put his numb hands into his pockets and felt the extra weight of Terry's sleeping bag on his back. He concentrated on putting one foot in front of the other, but each step seemed to repeat in his head. He seemed to repeat in his head, I am cold, I am wet, my feet hurt. The same sort of sad, miserable song was playing in Lois' mind. We'll never make it. I'll never see my mom again. I'm hungry. Terry was feeling pretty wobbly and hurting all over. Even Mr. Blake was feeling pretty low. His boots had filled up with water when he helped Lois out of the creek, and his wet socks rubbing up against him had caused a couple of blisters. They were a truly unhappy, uncomfortable group as they kept trudging slower and slower as the afternoon started to fade in the evening. About the tenth time of Susan asking, can we stop now? And Mr. Blake saying, 
Well, stop when it gets dark. Rather more snappish than he'd ever sounded. They had broken through the final line of trees and onto a rocky beach. The sea was as still as a pond, was as still as a pond, and the noise of their own progress had stopped them from hearing that they were getting close. Just at that moment, the sun had been hidden by clouds all day, dipped low enough to shine through a break in the clouds along the horizon, lighting up their faces with an amber glow and filling their hearts with the first glimmers of joy and hope. As if the sunrise were not enough to lighten their hearts, Oak in the bay, a pot of dolphins, began to leap and play. If you've never seen a pot of dolphins leaping and diving, you've missed seeing some of God's natural joy makers. You cannot be happy, you cannot not be happy to see that sight. The children all dropped their packs to the ground and stood watching over the sun uh, uh, until the sun set, like a gold coin going down into a velvet pocket. Where all the beasts of the field play, thus said the word, murmured Mr. Blake. What a vision fills me with joy after a pretty hard day. In this case, I think these dolphins are like God's messengers, the angels. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all the people. Thus says the word, said Terry, before Mr. Blake could get it out. Let's make camp, kids. And they all set to work, gathering wood and unpacking food and going about much more cheerfully than they would have believed possible after the awful day they've been through. And so this is our symbol for the third Sunday of Advent, the dolphins. And they represent joy. Joy is one of God's great gifts. Even at times when things aren't going very, are going very badly, God still brings moments of joy into our lives. If we look for them and are ready to receive them. So let's pray. Lord God, we remember that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Help us to look for the gifts of joy you bring, even when we are in bad situations. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. December 13th, the third Sunday in the season of Advent. Joy is the celebration given by God through the light of the world. Joy is the celebration given by God at the birth of the Christ child. Joy is the celebration when the angels sang glory to God in the highest. Let us dance and sing and shout for joy. Christ is coming again. Chapter 5. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, 
for it is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Sjorn Kierkegaard, the great Danish theologian, used to talk about the incarnation through story. He told the story of a prince who was running an errand for his father one day in the local village. As he did so, he passed through a very poor section of the town. Looking through the window of his carriage, he saw a beautiful young peasant girl walking along the street. He could not get her off his heart. He continued to come to the town day after day just to see her and to feel as though he were near her. His heart yearned for her, but there was a problem. How could he develop a relationship with her? He could order her to marry him. It was in his power to do so. But he wanted this girl to love him from the heart, willingly. He could put on his royal garments and impress her with his great regal entourage and drive up to her front door with soldiers and a carriage drawn with six horses. But he, if he did this, he would never be certain that the girl loved him or was simply overwhelmed with his power, position, and wealth. The prince came up with another solution. As you may have guessed, he gave up his kingly robe and symbols of power and privilege. He moved into the village among the people, shared their interests and concerns, and talked their language. In time, the young peasant girl grew to know him and then to love him. Kierkegaard suggested that this is what Jesus has done for us. The Word became flesh. The King of Heaven put aside his heavenly robes and divine prerogatives. He came to us as one of us. He lived among us, ate with us, drank with us, felt with us, all to win our love. He could have forced us, he could have overwhelmed us, but he chose to romance us. He stands here today with a smile of love and arms extended. He is the God who became real so that we could experience his transforming love. Jesus is not just a truth to believe in, he is a person to be experienced. Our second reading is from John chapter 1. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing, if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? Jesus, uh, John answered them, I baptize with water. 
Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. It's the word of the Lord, and we thank God for it. Well, the familiar picture of John is one of an endure, the enduring images of Advent. He is the poster child of a follower who had his life in order, waiting for the arrival of Jesus. He welcomed Jesus and embraced him, even though he still had questions. In our day, we rejoice that God's heart is still open to us, even if that makes him vulnerable. If Christmas is really true, then there is a reason for joy. There is hope for the world and the people in it. If it's not true, then there's no reason to celebrate anything. But God cared enough about the world to send his own son into it, to redeem it and bring it back to himself. That Christ succeeded in that task is evident by our worship even to this day. We give gratitude to God for his unspeakable gift of Jesus Christ. He is Emmanuel, God with us. We can be forgiven. We can know him and have a relationship with him. We can be a part of the kingdom of this great king. The light has come. Jesus has pointed us to God and opened the door to God's kingdom. John the Baptist each year calls us from Advent, prepare ye the way. His message doesn't change. The world is crooked and it can be made straight. Those who are empty can be filled. Those who are high shall be brought low. Rough ways will be made smooth. And the natural world, the world as we know it, the world we are surrounded by, will change by our actions of love. We'll be ready for the day of Christ, and we will be ready to see the salvation of God. This year, like every year, we celebrate that Christ, the salvation of God, is coming. And in Christmas, we celebrate the reality that Christ really does come into our hearts. So we're merely weeks away from celebrating the truth that Jesus will indeed come again. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of all creation, we pause in this Advent time to remember you and your goodness to us. In the rush of Christmas preparing, we can easily forget that your son Jesus is the reason for our celebrating. On this day, we acknowledge all the people we meet who make celebrating easier. Those who hold open doors in shops, <clears throat> those who come to work so that we might eat, those who visit hospital bedsides and provide care at personal risk to their own lives, those who brave lonely times, waiting when they long for human co contact. As your joyful people, we will be together singing praises and exchanging greetings. Help us to do the harder things, using phones instead of hugs, pictures and cards instead of actual presents. In this time of year, we want to remember that Jesus came into this world as a displaced person. Help us to treat each person with dignity and share our resources with people who have less than we do. We remember before you the many people who have had their own medical treatment delayed by the COVID-19 response. We remember those who have no visitors at a time when community is the norm. We pray your blessing on all those charged with making difficult decisions around vaccines and schedules. 
as Christmas Day approaches. Help us to keep Christ's spirit ever within us, that we may find deep joy in helping others and embracing the work that is before us. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We go in the peace of Christ. Amen. <laughs>